hey guys welcome to my channel i'm lorato kubedi as you should know but if you don't know now you know um today is a sit down video today we're not doing um any makeup and all of that i just thought that um i should start this series right now i've been postponing delaying for quite some time but i just felt like i just can't um keep postponing anymore and i should just start the series um i'm not sure if you guys can tell but there is a shift in quality because i just felt like i couldn't wait to find my other camera um since about march i haven't um i haven't been really recording so i haven't found my camera i don't know where it is in the house but i'm just hoping that i will be able to find it but for now we're just going to use my vlogging camera and i hope that the quality is what you guys are used to um so this um video is going to be my mental journey my mental health journey it's going to be on my diagnosis and i feel like that will be just enough for this video and we'll get deeper into my diagnosis and how it affects different parts of my life and all of that so um sorry, let me just sorry about that um so um i wasn't how do i start this okay so let me say my life before university it was quite simple um even my university life it was quite simple um i had gone through a lot of stuff but i just kept taking them away um distracting myself with going out drinking and those are the coping mechanisms that i had for years but i only started drinking like first year university um so my behavior changed um and i can say my behavior behavior changed because i started having a lot of interventions from my cousins and my friends they would sit me down a lot and eventually then my parents would sit me down a lot about my behavior my reckless behavior of leaving the house very very late taking a taxi just to go out um uh, not attending classes just to go out and basically i was just going out a lot but i just thought that's what people in university do that's what when you are finally like out of home when you've moved out of home because i was staying in race i just thought that's what most first years do you know go out and fail a lot of modules and then you make up for it in second year when you actually realize okay whoa i need to get focused yes i went out it was fun but night time will always be there so i need to focus so that's how i took it but i realized that um right now i have dropped out of two courses i was studying information science at up and then i had like a mental breakdown and whatnot at race um where i was very suicidal and some of my actions just didn't make sense so eventually i then left race and i moved back home and then um yeah i moved back home and then i went for this whole career guidance thing because uh, i just felt like information science is not for me and i only took it because at home you're not allowed to take a gap year so that's how i thought i thought i like computers i'll eventually fall in love with it 
but that was not the case for me so i went for that um, career guidance it said primary school teacher and i thought okay that makes sense because i love children so i stayed in up but then they transferred me to a different um what is that thing called a different um campus oh my gosh that took a while to a different campus and that's where i did um early childhood development i think it's ecd yes it's ecd so i did ecd and the same pattern started to happen i started going out not going for those classes and it just it was just happening again i didn't like the course and it was really just getting to me and the way i handled negative emotions or something bad happening to me was drinking and going out period so then i was in the third year and that's when i told my parents you know what i think i just really need to take a year to myself i need to take a year to figure out what i actually want to study and what career i actually want to go to because it just feels like a pattern that's just not gonna end and they then were like okay do what you find is best um so then I stayed home and I started applying for jobs and then I got a job at a internet cafe in Wonder Park. I'm not sure if you guys know Wonder Park Shopping Center, but there was a an internet cafe that I worked for. It still is there, but they've just moved to a different location in the shopping center. So I started working there and it was stressful but i enjoyed it um it had its ups and downs but i really enjoyed the challenge and all that um then it started becoming hectic um i felt like i was me and my colleague he no longer works there now as well but me and my colleague it felt like we were the managers you know like the managers were hardly there so we had to keep the business up and running we were doing the managerial tasks as well you know doing the cash handling the cash handling everything you know um so then that started to get to me and I was there for about six months and then I resigned I decided to work for my mom and um, yeah it just became a pattern um, I got a job at Fashini as well um, it became quite hectic and then I started drinking and going out more than often and then i resigned and decided to work for my mom and now we are in 2020 when things started to get real um i remember in about january um my brother was not okay and it started to affect me and i really didn't pay attention to it i only realized when a therapist came to the house and she asked me how am i doing and that's when i just broke down and cried and all of that um because i think for the first time i was now being aware of how i am how everything is affecting me and um i started to go into like a very dark place i started not recording as much as i'm used to because i was home more often and i started to sleep a lot i would sleep during the day the whole day i would stay awake the whole night i wasn't able to sleep by myself anymore i moved out of my bedroom and i went to i started sleeping with my sister and it just became you know a day today 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 days turned into months and then months turned into like 
even till now so it's been like january it's been about i'm going on to the seventh month where i haven't slept in my room and there was this intense fear of sleeping at night i had a really bad insomnia of sleeping at night so i stopped sleeping at night i would watch tv watch videos until about 4 or 5 a.m and then i would sleep so it just became it just became like a day-to-day -day thing you know i would wake up around 11 bath maybe have breakfast get into bed stay in bed looking outside the window crying and then sleeping and that became like my daily my day-to-day -day, um life you know sort of life um i started losing myself i stopped watching tv with my family i started isolating myself i started becoming more suicidal than usual let me just give you a little background on the whole suicide thing i've been battling with suicide since about high school um i used to do it at school i used to do it in my room and it's just been it's been something that i've been struggling with until now um i won't say that i'm not suicidal at all i have my moments even yesterday i was feeling suicidal but um yeah so i started becoming more suicidal acting on it um actually going on the internet to find out the most successful ways of committing suicide um then there was one night where i asked my mom i think i need help i think i need to go somewhere i don't know where but i need to go somewhere to get help she didn't understand it but then um i tried committing suicide um i took i got like painkillers that were very strong and i took all of them and i had access to my dad's gin so i started drinking my dad's gin hoping it will accelerate the process um i didn't feel anything then i went to sleep and when i woke up i was sick i was throwing up the whole day um i hadn't eaten anything and it got to a point where i was throwing up but there was no food you know it was it was like foam you know i'm sorry if i'm too graphic but i feel like with this topic there's just you can't sugarcoat anything so then i was laying on my sister's bed and my mom knocked off um she saw me and then she went to the police station so as she was at the police station um it just felt like now i'm about to die you know and then my boyfriend called me and he asked are you okay then i said yes i'm okay and then he's like no really are you okay and then um i broke down and i told him what i did and he sent me a number to call and then i just ignored the number and then about like i think about five minutes later i decided to call the number then i realized it's a i think it's a suicide hotline and i was talking to this lady and she was talking to me and she asked me if i'm alone all of that and she then asked for my mom's numbers and i gave her my mom's numbers after some time my mom came home um yeah she she didn't check on me i think she just thought it's not that deep so and it's not that serious so i don't know i don't know but um she then i'm drinking i'm not crying she then proceeded to make dinner and then she woke me up to come and eat and then i woke up ate and all of that and about i think uh two days after that incident she sat me and my brother down and she said she under she has an idea 
of what's affecting my brother but she doesn't have an idea of what's affecting me so what is actually happening and then i told her of an incident that happened to me when i was very young that is starting to affect me and then um i then told her i want to go to a mental clinic um because i feel like i can get help there she i think it was just something that just scared her and she didn't know how to handle it like now her daughter wants to go to a mental clinic are things that bad and i just had to keep on pushing so i i looked online for mental clinics and i started reading the reviews because i had an idea of how mental clinics are and i was just very scared that i'm going to like leave the mental clinic being worse or being traumatized which i didn't want so i just started looking for mental clinics and then i found um a clinic called uh zwaffle stream zwaffle stream clinic um is it zwaffle stream yes it's zwaffle stream clinic and it just looked like a hotel you know it looked like a hotel and i was like okay not the rooms the rooms don't look like hotels they look just ordinary bed cupboards window but they look very neat and they don't look scary you know I started to apply to them reached out to them that i'd really like to go to their establishment um contacted my doctor got a referral letter started packing all my clothes um and then i told my mom i'm ready let's do this and i think that's when it hit her that okay this is serious um and then um when i felt like it was now becoming real i also started becoming scared now that oh my gosh i'm really going to a mental clinic um what is it gonna be like yeah you can just you can just think about what i was thinking at that time So I had like a whole picture of what a mental clinic was and I was just, it started becoming real and I almost pulled out but then um, yeah my boyfriend was like no you're gonna do this and then I finally got the courage and I was like okay let's do this and then I went there wow what an experience um, it was quite an experience to for once not having a distraction not being able to run away from my emotions and everything that's hurting me and hearing other people's stories and being able to connect with other people and not feeling like you're crazy because one thing i can tell you about what i go through every day it feels like i'm going crazy you know it feels like i don't know how to handle my emotions you know my my thoughts are always running at like a hundred and i get headaches and like i can't like you know when a person just says just relax just breathe i find it very hard to do that so being at that place i just felt normal for once you know and going for therapy going for group therapy um i experienced my first panic attack there which i will talk about in another video well i'll talk about the whole experience it was my first time going through that um yeah it was my first time going through that meeting amazing people having relationships with them i mean friendships i have um a friendship with carla 
um Carla and Letabo those are the two people that I will never ever forget and I still talk to until today um so I was there for about 21 days and I just felt like 21 days were not enough um I got diagnosed and my diagnosis was BPD which is borderline personality disorder um, I'll also have a video on that where I will actually explain what it is on medical terms and not Google terms because I won't lie um, when I heard that I was just like it makes it seem as if I'm like two people in one but I'm actually not it's just um, intense emotions it's just yeah it's just very very intense emotion that's what BPD is um, but I will talk about it more and we'll just go through the the symptoms and the characteristics and all of that in a separate video so I got that diagnosis and I won't lie to you I felt like after reading it because my psychiatrist then gave me a pamphlet to read um and then i read it and i spoke to him about what what i understand when it when i think of bpd and how i see myself in it and um it for the first time it just made me feel like wow so that's what i've been struggling with you know that because i don't know how to explain it but every time there would be an intervention there would always be that question of why Larato? why do you do this why and it's like it's i'm not using it as using it as an excuse and i don't feel like anybody should ever use their mental health as an excuse to do bad things to people and to mistreat people but it just it sort of made me feel like i'm not crazy feel like i'm not like i'm okay i'm normal this is what this is what i'm dealing with you know it doesn't define me yeah it doesn't define me it's just what i need to get handle of what i need to um get techniques to deal with um to manage it because then I'll be able to manage my life. I'll be able to manage my relationships with friends and family, with work, with myself. I will be able to, I'll have the techniques to just be okay, you know. Um, sorry that the, 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 the lighting has gone down a bit. Sorry about that. okay so um yeah i got that diagnosis and it sort of made me feel sort of better and yeah i then after the 21 days i got back home and i wasn't happy not at all um because i was facing things at home that i wasn't ready to face and I was still suicidal and I was still in a black hole. And then on the um, 5th of May, I woke up in ICU um, from a overdose. I decided to attempt to take my life again, but on a very, very drastic, um, on a very drastic level and um i stayed in the hospital for about like a week or so for a week and then i went to my mom's friend's place and i stayed there and i got a therapist and the therapist would come there so i stayed there for about i think about two weeks yeah i think about two weeks and then i moved back home so i am Mm. I'm taking it day by day. I'm not gonna lie. I'm taking it day by day. Um, I 
we'll be going back to Swavo's stream on the 2nd of August, if not earlier. Because um, I need it. And all I can say is I, I have good moments and I have bad moments. I have days I don't want to get out of bed. I stay in bed for the whole day. I have medication that helps me sleep. Um, not I don't have as much medication prior to the overdose that landed me in ICU um, because I think my psychiatrist was like she can't have that much pills because what happens if she tries it again um, so yeah um, I'm taking it day by day um, that's all I can say, you know, when you're in this, when you're going through things and when you have things you're going through, things you're thinking, um, emotions come and go. One moment you're good, the next moment you're terrible, then you want to take your own life and it's just a cycle. But I'm just... I'm trying to be very hopeful and just keep being positive, keep on taking my meds, keep on going for therapy and I believe that I will get better as I go. Um, I'm not on WhatsApp, I don't have communication with my friends and family as I'm used to but I just feel like I can't, it's, I don't know how to explain it, it's like Oh, it's weird. It's weird. It's like I'm trapped within myself. If that makes sense. It's like... It's like I'm trapped within myself. I'm trying to be happy. I'm trying to be better. Positive. But it's like... A whole lot is going... Through me. It's like... Being there and going through therapy took all those emotions out and now I'm starting to deal with them if that makes sense but yeah guys um, I hope that me opening up and me being brutally honest with everything that I've gone through and going through right now that it can help someone um, saying it's gonna get better It's gonna get better that's just what we have to hold on to you know um, just know that your hurt is hurt you know whatever you're going through I know that hearing someone saying someone has it worse does not help so if you're going through something similar or you know someone who's going through something um, just be there for them don't make them feel like their emotions or what they've gone through is not that bad you know just be there for them and um, yeah let's talk in the um, in the description box about this um, mental health is not a joke it's something that's very serious and I hope that with this series I can help um, a lot of people and that it can also help me as well because um, talking about it helps. So let's get through this together and we'll make it through together. I sat down and I recorded which is a good thing. I'm very happy about that and I'm happy that I didn't cry today. Yo. I've been crying for too long so thank you guys so much for watching my video do like this video if you thoroughly liked it comment down below on any other topics videos you'd like me to do subscribe if you haven't subscribed and hit that notification bell so that you never miss a beat and never miss a pause I'll see you guys in the next video